Well, how I got involved in acting, I got involved at a very young age. Um, it was probably after uh, my parents, the inspiration, I guess you could call it, was when my parents took me to see um, Beauty and the Beast um, on tour, the Ameri uh, North American tour at um, the Academy of Music in Philadelphia. Um, and that's really when I kind of like fell in love, I guess, with theater, and it was part of me. And it's really funny because I just, this past season, my last uh, show with Stoga Theater, Stoga Music Theater, was um, Beauty and Beast. So that was really fun, and it kind of just tied the beginning of my life to right now together, and it was really fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it so much, so, yeah. Well, as I said before, um, I got involved at a uh, very young age, and I got started um, right here in Philadelphia, um, and that's that was basically the start of it, um, and I, you know, went from there. The rest is history. Yeah. Have I done any plays, musicals, or theater programs? Wow. Um, I've done a lot over the past years. Um, I guess you could say really that the, the theatrical part of me started back um, very many years ago. Um, when I was in elementary school, I guess I really like enjoyed like um, doing the colonial interpreting in Valley Forge, and I really liked being portraying somebody else, you know, that was part of history or something like that. Then the music came in, and then when I got into middle school, I did the shows there, and I started with Charlie and the Great Grass Oliver at Valley Forge. Then from Valley Forge, I went to Episcopal for. Um, high School Musical, and then I came back to Valley Forge for Cinderella, and then after Cinderella I did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Then I went to high school and did Titanic, and the rest from there is just history. Acting-wise, you know, Cinderella was probably one of my favorites to do, and then I've been doing things all this past time, up until Pill Man, which Pill Man just wrapped about two or three weeks ago, I'm going to say. And Pill Man was really, a lot of people, it was an interesting story line, but it was really something more than just that story. Wow. How many films have I done? Um, a lot. Like, the shows, like the theatrical shows are countless, and so are the film productions. Um, a lot. I'm going to just say a lot. Am I currently working on any projects? Um, well, I'm currently working on Colonial Kids um, from ACASM. I'm working on Turn Washington Spies, which is on AMC. I'm working on um, The Prince and Colonial Williamsburg's ETFs. So I think those four projects are a lot. Um, I just got off Pill Man. Those are my four um, film productions. Stage-wise, um, I'm going to be working on it's all it runs in the family, um, which is a hilarious farce, um, medical farce um, that is going to be taking at, place at Villanova, um, and then I'm going to also be um, helping out with directing Seussical at Valley Forge, Seussical musical. Yep, I just um, two years ago I helped direct uh, Wizard of Oz, so I can't wait for Seussical. How's my... okay. Um, so, personally-wise, you know, I really... a lot of, like, production aspects take up, take up a lot of my time. But, um... I don't really have a personal life, I guess you could say. Um, I'm always busy doing something. I do have school, and right now it's December, so it's really close to finals. Like, finals are next start next Saturday, our reading day is on Friday, so Saturday, Friday, we have off for reading day, then Saturday we start finals, and then we get off officially after your last final, or the 18th, December 18th, yeah, December 12th through 18th for finals. Um, so Villanova, like school work, takes up a lot of my time, just to say, I worked on Pill Man for 62 hours in one week. And that wasn't including any homework or 
and it wasn't including any physical school work like being in school. So it was 62 hours on top of the thing for just one production a week. Um, so that's a lot. And then I get to have like dinner with friends and stuff every now and then. Um, just this past week I got to have dinner with a close friend and then um, I was out at the mall with my friends last night. So that was fun. During in between shows and projects I got to do some stuff, but right now I'm trying to really study for my finals, so I do well on them. Um, so that's a big deal. Yep. I get to watch, now that I say it, a little bit of TV whenever I can from On Demand, and tonight I'm really looking forward to the um, Indianapolis-Pittsburgh game. Steelers, go Steelers. Jackie Ivanko is going to be... Um, singing the national anthem, so I cannot wait for that, and I can't wait for her performance and to actually see the game and for Pittsburgh to beat Indianapolis. I'm sorry, I'm a Steelers fan. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good question. Um, so the kinds of roles I've done over the years are really kind of like, I've never done something like evil. I've always done like, I guess, like a good guy, hero type role, like John Carter, um, Harry Potter, um, roles like that I've really done, you know, and I guess I've always been satisfied with playing the role, but performance-wise, sometimes I'm, I'm very picky about my own performances, but I've been satisfied with every role that I've ever gotten, no doubt. Um, well, the difference is really big. Um, performing in the film is very different from performing in live theater. In performing in a film, you are you have a camera, like right now with the interview, um, and with the theater you have an audience that's right there and it's live. So if you screw up, you can't just yell cut, take, and then redo. You, you don't have any redos. You're sitting there and the audience is there. The, so there are no redos, basically. The greatest thing, though, is that they're um, basically what happens is you can't, the lights are so heavy on stage that you can't see anything past usually like the orchestra or the first row um, of the audience. So it's not really that scary. Um, it's a bit nerve wracking, live theater. Um, with film, it's really fun and your friends are all there so you can kind of goof off sometimes. But um, yeah, that's mainly the difference. Wow, that's another great question. Um, I guess the number one thing I would like to improve in my acting ability is kind of exploring more roles. Like I was talking about earlier, I'm usually kind of on the good guy, the, like hero side. I kind of want to see how I would do as a villain. Um, you know, in film, both in film and in um, in theater. Like I guess I, I would want to play guest on. I guess if talking about being the beast and everything, I guess Don would be a great role, I guess, to start off with. Um, you know, I would, I also, like, from when we did Harry Potter, I always wanted to feel, know how playing Voldemort felt from, like, Noah, and he was so great at it, and he got so into it, and I think half of that was the makeup, so I really want to do that. Yeah. That would be fun. Do I ever think that I could have done a bit better in a role? Um, sometimes. I'm always, as I said earlier, I'm very picky with how I see myself on screen or, you know, kind of in the show. Um, if you're doing a theatrical show, then every single show is kind of different, so you can improve. But with a film, it's kind of like cut and done. Um, so, I mean, there are things that I would like to change with Harry when I, how I portrayed Harry and stuff like that. I, there are things um, I would like to change, but things like John Carter, that's been a span of so many years that I've gotten to actually like get to know John and I got to mold him that I'm really confident in that. But I still find things that I'm like, oh, I could've done better here, or I could've done better there. Yep. Oh, I don't pick favorites. Um, <laughs> Favorites I'll pick, people I don't pick, and roles are so hard, but I, I guess John Carter and Harry Potter are, like, line in line. Um, I really like playing Harry Potter because I always wanted to play Harry Potter, 
and John Carter just because of the experience that I've gotten with him. So those are my two favorite roles. I can't pick between them at all. No. Well, I don't mean to like, and I don't think this is like the questions asking, but I don't mean to like boast or gloat or anything like that, but I guess my strong points are really my ability to be centered and kind of with it during each shot that I can be myself off screen or off stage, but when I'm on stage or on camera, I'm completely that that character and I'm doing completely what I have to at that moment. So that's really my strong point as an actor, I'm gonna say. What, I learned, what have I learned from the directors has, well, what I've learned from directors over the past has been enormous, even from um, just meeting different directors, like getting to meet Steven Spielberg and hearing what he had to say, um, that was amazing. But getting to work with different actors like Nicole Granny, um, Nali Gaspani, um, everyone, Liz Marfarino, um, you know, everyone's endless and every um, director is different. And every director brings something to taste, especially with theater. And when you're part of a theater company, um, it's different because if you get a new director and you're used to the old director, it takes a little bit to get to used to, but then you see what um, like the perks are and stuff. And I've worked with a lot of directors for numerous amounts of years, like um, Michelle Simino and so many others. It's just, you know, I've learned a lot from each of them, and I've learned something different from each of them. But I guess the strongest point that I've learned from all of them is like be focused and be yourself at the same time, which is really hard. And if any actor or actress can do it, it's really amazing. So that's, I guess, why I've really learned from them. Yep. Um, what have I learned from my cast members, like fellow cast members and actors and actresses? It's even more than I've learned from the directors, you know. Really, I, this whole be yourself thing is really important, and you know, it's really great. I mean, you learn something from everyone that you work with, either as a good thing or as a bad thing. You know, don't do this or do this. You know, I've had this experience with this or something like that. Everyone brings something to the table, and again, the biggest thing that directors or cast members or actors or actresses could ever teach you is just. Be yourself full-heartedly and, you know, do what you think is right. Be you. Well, my biggest achievement in acting, I guess, or in, you know, any production-wise, um, entertainment, I guess, uh, has to be, well, two things. Um, I was really honored with the Senate Award from Pennsylvania. Um, for John Carter. I was really honored for that. That was a really big deal, I guess you could say, when I got that. Um, that really was special for me. Um, but before that was Titanic, which was kind of like something I really attribute to me as, you know, in theater and everything. Um, it really gave me a lot of hope. Um, the Cappy Award was something that <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll never forget. The Cappy Award is something that, you know, I it's hanging in my study, um, and I look at it, you know, every day almost, and I just, you know, I think and then I pray, and I, I seriously, I seriously pray. Um, I'm just, like, so thankful for, you know, what, you know, God has given me and what, you know, all of the people that I've worked out with throughout my life have given me, and the Cappy Award really you know, some side up. And it's really special. Yeah. Well, I've, um, again, I don't mean to boast or gloat or anything, um, but I've gone, as I just said, a lot of different um, things. I've gone, you know, different first places with National History Day. I've gone d different first places with um, Shakespeare festivals, um, the Cappy Award, the Senate Award. Um, and a handful of others, but you know, the really the two major ones were the Cappy and the Ascendant honors. Those were the two really special ones to me. Yep. Oh, that's a really tough question. 
Theater or film? Um, I, I, th I like both of them the same. Um, but I guess you could say that I like, um, I guess, film more because I'm really into film and like mise-en-scene and um, everything else that are elements of film. Um, and I really like theater too. I really love theater and um, film I just like more as an actor because I can be safe with it and I can be like, oh, I can redo this. And I'm not constantly worrying, oh, am I going to mess up? Am I going to screw up? Um, even though once you're out there, you don't really think about that. You think just about your part. But still, there's much a lot less worry in it. So, yeah. But then I can't change things. So, yeah. Well, that's that. I guess I, I don't really prefer any role. I'm really open, as I said before, to doing anything from like hero based to villain based. Um, I'm not really, I don't really have a safety net or anything with roles. Um, I'm just really open to anything. And, you know, um, going back to the director question, actually, you know, I've worked with casting directors who can say, like, oh, you're not right for this role because, you know, your face is shaped, like, straighter, or, like, it's too straight, it's too thin, it's too fat, it's too, you're too obliquely shaped, or, and I've gone that before, you know, you're unsymmetrical, your eyes aren't the color we're looking for this and that. Um, Harry Potter has very a lot of specifications, but the way I got Harry Potter was through acting ability and not through um, kind of looks, even though I do look like him a little bit, but especially when I was a kid. I, you know, the eye color and the um, just different things, features, he has a fatter face than me. So, um, different things and it's just you know working with people that you you can't let that get to you because if that gets to you then you're not cut for the business you just have to take rejection take um, you know denial and just throw it away and not think about it um, that's the same thing for all guys and girls who are in relate not in relationships or in relationships you know um, it's, you know, you have to be open to rejection. And a lot of people aren't, and that's when things go wrong a lot of times. And it's unfortunate. But, you know, be yourself. Be open to everything. Be open to constructive criticism. I tell my students that when I teach theater all the time. Be open to criticism. Be open to constructive criticism. Just because we're yelling at you doesn't mean that we um, hate you or anything like that. We love you and... You know, just be yourself. Teen internet celebrity. I like those. <laughs> I like that design. Um, there is no hard part, and I wouldn't call us teen internet celebrities. That label is number one wrong, and number two, um, being, I'm going to rephrase that, being, what's the hardest part of being an actor and actress? Um, I guess it's really managing your time. I mean, I when I had that final count for that um, one week that I worked with Pillow Man, I could not believe that I put in 62 hours of my own time, which is over two days. You know, that's including homework and everything. But I, if now that I thought back at it, by the time I took um, one of my really close friends home every night and everything, I would be getting around home around midnight because we would end around 11.15 or something. I would drive her back home. Um, we might talk for like five minutes. So I would be leaving her place at 11.30ish. And by the time I got home, it was like midnight, you know? And it it was a time when, you know, a lot during theater season, I would, or like, not during filming because I can see my parents, but during um, theater seasons, I'm always telling my parents, you know, this is this, you know, I'm, I hate not being able to see you, you know, all the time and stuff like that. Even during filming, it's, it gets a little bit hectic like that too, but not as bad. Um, I'm going to just give everyone one tip on being a great actor or actress. Just be yourself. 
I mean, be you. Um, you know, Jackie and myself have always been um, campaigning this, be you. The strongest thing that you can do as an actor and actress is be you, be yourself. Don't try to be someone else just to get a role or be someone else just because, you know, you want to attract a girl or, you know, be friends with a girl or, you know, be friends with the popular kids. It's okay to be, like, a math nerd or, you know, you know, a super genius or something like that. It's, you're being yourself, you're expressing yourself and full heartedly just be you. Um, I can't stress that enough, be you. Um, you know, I'm very proud of Juliet for being herself and, um, you know, when you're not yourself, and I say this a lot, when you're not yourself, you're never yourself. And what I mean by that, I know that's a little confusing and contradicting, um, but when you're not being yourself, you're not you, and you're trying to be someone else who you're not, even um, though you think you're being you. So it's really masking a persona, and that's not good. So be you, um, be yourself, and just remember that for all eternity. Teach your kids that. If you're a teacher, tell your students that. Tell everyone you know. Just be you and be yourself. It'll actually make the world such a better place. This is really hard question. Um, I did not prepare for this at all. Um, Anna Sophia Robb is amazing. Um, she's such a great actress and I've seen her in so many different roles. Um, and really when I get to see um, their actor, actress in a different role in multiple different like films that aren't the same like the Harry Potter series. Nope, that doesn't count. But like when I see Anna Sophia play Bethany Hamilton and then, you know, um, in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and playing Carrie from the Carrie Diaries, it's it's just, you know, you get to see different sides of actors and actresses, and then you get to see the same things that are, you know, them being them and adding to the roles. So, Anna Sophia Rob. Yeah. That's a really lengthy word pack question. Um, what should a future actor or actress prepare themselves? like in to prepare themselves for theater or film? Um, for an inspiring actor or actress for tele or for production or entertainment things, they should really again just remember that they need to be really organized, really concise, really, you know, with everything and not goofing off and they need to be themselves at the same time. Um, what they can do to prepare is, you know, get a coach, get an audition coach, my um, theater voice my triple threat coach, as I call her, is Jenny Eisenhower, and she's done so much for me over the past years, and I just love working with her. So get someone you're comfortable with working, and practice with them, rehearse with them, and be yourself. Good age. Um, I'm going to say any age is a good age, um, but again, there have been lessons learned from stuff like this. Um, Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen, um, the Olsen twins, I mean, they got involved in a really young age, and it's really hard to grow up in the spotlight. Um, like, you're going to take them, you're going to take any Disney Channel actor or actress um, that wasn't involved. If you were involved, like, small time before this, that's a great thing. Start small and then get bigger. Don't just go and jump in and get big. Um, that's when you see people like the Olsen twins or, um, you know, people like, I guess, Selena Gomez or something like that. They got involved at a very young age and Miley Cyrus. And they get involved into this bubble, which they can't really get out of. Um, and it's really, sometimes it's sad to watch them just, you know, not be able to get out of the bubble like that and be themselves. Um, because they're always trying to reach higher standards than they can attain. Um, and, I mean, if you look at Adele, when she started young, and then she just got bigger and bigger when she got older, um, and she can really control herself, and she took time off, um, what was it, four years, I think? Um, it's 21, 25. Um, and she took time off, and she really 
you know, she doesn't like the spotlight. Sia doesn't like the spotlight. Sia, you know, she can just mask her personality or her persona, but people still know who she is, and you know, but she can. Um, they all have good points, and you know, Jackie got involved at a very young age, um, but she's been able to maintain a normal life, which is really hard for anyone who gets young or gets involved really young in entertainment. Um, and entertainment isn't just movies, television, film, um, the theater. It's also singing and voice acting too. But Jackie got involved really young, and she um, did really good as she grew up. And I'm just really proud of her for you know being herself and helping me with this you know BU campaign and everything. And you know just knowing you know what it is to take to you know have a life and then have you know a touring life and have a normal school life. And she's going to public school, I went to public school, it's all the same. Any advice I would give to a person trying to be an actor or an actress is just be yourself. I mean, I've said that, I, it's probably like, everyone's tired of me saying it by now, but it's really the magic word when it comes to this, just be yourself. Don't do anything that, you know, you would feel uncomfortable with. Go in your comfort zone. But try to get out of your comfort zone in the way that you're aspiring roles that you know you probably wouldn't do, but you're still comfortable with them. Absolutely. That quote, if you set your mind to it, you can do it. Um, most of the times that works. All, you know, just the majority of the time. Just be yourself, put everything you have into it, and, you know, um, if you put your set your mind to it, Follow it through and do it. Don't, don't just stop and let it drop off. I mean, there are going to be bumps in the road. You know, as I, as I said, the directors, you know, casting directors might not like you. Big deal. you got to get over it. you got to get over rejection. So it's a part of the learning curve. Um, well, I tried to improve on my acting skills personally by, you know, looking at my fellow cast members and anyone that I run into um, and Jenny um, teaching me and take their advice that I always ask, you know, what do you think I could do better? And, you know, they will tell me, and they're like, well, maybe I don't like this about you, or something like that. And everything the casting directors say, if it's not, like, fiscal-wise, um, you know, you need to be able to, you know, have multiple action accents, excuse me, do a British accent or do a Brooklyn accent. I can go Jenny, and I can work on that. And, um, yeah, that's that. Next quality as an actor. I guess it's just me being me. I, I'm, I'm getting tired of saying it, so... Um, but yeah, it's really just being yourself. Oh, we're gonna go here. Um, okay, um, so for the New York Psycho, I in, I'm, don't pick favorites, as I said before, but I really enjoyed working with all of my cast members. Um, and you know, every project I work on, I enjoy. I love working with the casts and the crews. They're just amazing, and we're all just huge families. And new relationships can come from it. Like I've met, you know, one of my best friends from Pillman that I worked on, and she's amazing, and she's awesome, and she's here for me if I need to talk to her or anything like that. And I'm just thinking that you know, if I didn't get involved with Pillman, I would probably not met her when I did, and our friendship wouldn't have been the same as it is today. So I really, you know, just doing stuff like that, and, you know, I'm thinking back to, you know, New York Psycho now, and I loved working with every single one of them. And, you know, I've met new people, new people have met each other, relationships have formed from that, and friendships, and lifelong, my other best friend is from the New York Psycho, and so it's just something that's amazing, and it's really hard to explain. Yeah. There's no one hard to work with. Just when people are grumpier, um, it's hard to work with them, but then you talk to them and figure out what's going on, and then everything's better, like, just like that, because you're such, like, a family. So, no one's hard to work with. <laughs> when I act, the amount of experience that I draw on is sometimes massive. If I'm doing a scene where I kind of need to be upset, I 
kind of think back to, you know, when I've had tragedy happen in my life, when I've been upset, when I've been hurt. And that's where I really get all that from, and that emotion. So that's called method acting. And, you know, you draw from your own experiences. And, you know, even being in a role like Daniel Day-Lewis is a method actor where he just gets in the role and he is that role. And um, he was in a role where he, you know, they didn't have medical care back then. So he just got hurt and got sick and he just plowed right through it and said, refuse all medical attention. Um, and you have to give credit to a lot of those people who do that stuff. What do I do if I find myself acting in a real life relationship? Um, um, I just go with it. You have to do your job and, you know, if that's the job, then you know, a lot of times, you know, you might be in an argument with, I've done this before, or I've experienced it, um, when, if you're, um, you know, like, Harry and Ron are, like, best friends, let's say, and this is, this wasn't the situation, but this is what can happen, and let's say David and I got into a really, like, bad argument over something, and we were really, like, mad at each other and that happened in the morning and we were filming like 10 minutes later i would have to get up there and david would have to get up there and we would have to be like yo ron hey harry what's up you know and we would have to be cool with each other and then we can you know cut and check the gate and then we can go off on our separate ways and be mad at each other and then but you know we'll always reconcile and we'll always become you know back to base so that's how that happens uh, that actually did happen multiple times because over the spam that I've had to go through productions with. But I've never, thankfully, had to have had experienced something like that. I've never had to do that. But I know people, especially in films I've been in, that have experienced that, and sometimes it's hard. Um, but sometimes when they're on set and they're kind of like, you know, being friends and everything, it makes them reconcile even more, and it helps them get over their problems. Yeah. That's a hard one, too, that I haven't already done. If I had to start in a remake of a classic film, I want to say The Great Escape. Maybe. The Great Escape. Oh, there's so many. White Christmas. Oh, White Christmas. There's so many. I can't even say. Mary Poppins. Oh, I can't believe I forgot Mary Poppins. Oh. Yeah. One of them. One of them. I don't even know. One of them. Wow, that's a lot of scenes. What scene am I most proud of ever? Um, there's a scene where John, as John Carter, kind of takes the reins and everything, and he says, he, he has his, his um, brother is a patriot, his sister is dating a patriot, and the rest of his family are loyalists. And his father doesn't know that his older sister Mary is dating um, Payne Randolph's son, who's a patriot. Um, so he has to control his sister, his older brother George, and make peace with them and his father. And that's really hard. And there's a time that he just says, you know, stop it, stop it, stop it. And he just blatantly goes out and says, you know, I'm tired of all this division between our family. Why can't we just be a family? We have both loyalists and patriots in our family. Why can't we just be one and not divide it? And I think that was my favorite scene I've ever done. Because on screen, it's just fabulous. And that's the happiest scene I've ever been. Yeah, actually there are. Um, there are some actors and actresses that I thought were going to be like something that I had no idea they had that talent in them and ability. And it's really funny because, um, you know, you never know it from looking at them. And then they just do this and you're just like, wow, I never knew they had that much talent in them. And it's really awesome.
Especially if there's a crew member who becomes a cast member. That's amazing. So, there are people who have, like, I'm not going to put any names out there, but there are people who I'm proud of that have done stuff like that. Uh, that's a really funny question. Uh, <laughs> are there any scenes in the film that make me want to burn me in every copy of the film? Um, yeah. The battle sequence in Harry Potter, I did not like. It was okay filming it. At the end of it, there's one where Charlotte throws a spell and she throws it and the sound effect goes off and my head turns and it, it looks really cool. But other than that, I all of it goes. I went and burned every copy of Harry Potter for that. So, unfortunately, but yeah. That one scene. Well, having a role like Harry Potter or John Carter, you have to be really strong for it. Not like muscular strong or anything like that, but like physically and mentally strong. You have to know what you're doing and getting into. And I think roles like that are really, um, they're the hard parts of the role, is you know, kind of being there and being able to channel your inner Harry Potter or your inner John Carter or whoever you're playing. That's the hardest part. I would say the films I've done, I'm not going to say that they're better than ever or worse. Um, I'm just happy with them in general. Um, I guess the best film is, I'm going to go with, you know, The Colonial Kids, I guess. I mean, John Carter's character is just so strong and so meaningful to me. I just like, I guess, that film. <laughs> Do I ever get stage fright? Yes, all the time. Um, and even before, like, a performance, I'll get st stage fright sometimes. Not, you know, like, normal performances, but, like, when you're going out in front of, like, the French president or French ambassador, yeah, you get stage fright. Um, and, you know, I usually say a prayer before each show or each um, filming day or each performance. Um, I'll say a prayer or something and get, you know, kind of, like, channel, channel, like, inner strength and everything and, you know, ask God to, you know, be with me in the moment. And I'll, I usually come out on top. And it's, I have fun and I enjoy it. And you forget all about your stage fright once you're out there. You really do. I'm never, ever completely satisfied with my work. Um, um, I always, even when I look back at it or something like that, I just kind of nitpick things and be like, oh, I could have done that better. I said this before, too. I was like, oh, I could have done that better. Or I could have been, oh, I wish I had done that. Or, you know, kind of like, even though it wasn't part of the blocking, move my arm this way or not picked up my head at that time. Um, in Harry Potter, there's a moment where I move my head and... I just, it, it's too soon, and I just, a lot of things with Harry Potter that I wish I could have improved on. Yeah. Oh, The New York Psycho. Um, that, that, Psycho films and everything started really when we were in New York. I had just met Charlotte, like, two seconds before we started. Um, we were in New York, and we were filming a documentary, Stoga Invades New York City. Um, and she just goes there and she grabs Nick's head or something like that and we're and then we're like oh we'll put the video together and you know I don't know what to call it and you know we were just sitting there after like days after and we were just like the New York Psycho and then we were like Harry the New York Psycho versus Harry Potter oh, that's an idea and that's how the entire Psycho that's a very like condensed version of how New York Psycho and Psycho films started she's has all, Charlotte has all the psycho stuff, and I have AKSM, so we attribute putting both of them together to make one beautiful thing. Yep. Did I think that? Did I think that um, psycho films and New York Psycho would turn out like this? No. If you asked me in New York on that one day, after we had, you know, finished filming, I would have been like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I never saw it coming as far as being kind of like this thing that's making my career. I mean, I'm at Villanova, I'm dual majoring in communications and poli sci and minoring in music and theater arts um, and concentrating in film production um, while taking French and Russian. Um, so I have a lot, you know, it's a lot even to hear or to think about or to even say, let alone say. So, you know, my, part of my major is 
based off of, you know, what I'm going to school for, based off of basically what I learned from New York Psycho. And, um, you know, communications, talking about the major, is something more than um, just film and stuff. It's, you know, learning about relationships between people and how they interact and play out. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, can't wait to come back. Yep. Really, I can't. Yep. Hi, I'm Andrew McKeo, and thanks for watching.